And he's put all things under his feet. Can you say all things? Woo! Are under my feet. Glory to God. So there needs to be a, a step in your walk today. There needs to be a praise coming out of your mouth today. Glory to God. There needs to be victory on your face today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So look at somebody and say, I love you. I bless you. And Jesus loves you too. God bless you, everybody. And you may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he is alive. And in case you're wondering why everybody got excited, maybe you're new to church, maybe you're a brand new Christian, it's because on the inside of them, they're celebrating the resurrection life and resurrection power of their Lord and Savior. So sometimes you'll see Christians run. Sometimes you'll see Christians dance. <laughs> All right, Lord, I'll do it. Sometimes you get in the river. And it seems like it could go on and on. Woo, and it can. As long as you let the liver. learn to cooperate with we must learn to flow with the Holy Spirit and his leadings and let me tell you where it starts yes it does start in the church but he wants you to take it home and he wants you to exercise yourself may I say it that way in the presence of the Lord When you wake up in the morning, you need to dance. Glory to God. You need, or you need to praise. 
however the Lord may lead you. But learn to step out, church. God wants us free from this fleshly thing that tries to keep us from stepping out. Don't be concerned with what people think, but just keep your eyes on the Lord. He is your refuge. He is your fortress. He is your God. In you, Lord, will we trust. In him will we trust. Glory to God. Are you ready? Oh, <laughs> hey, listen, unless you've ever been up here, <laughs> we don't want, we, we, oh, thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but Jesus is glad you're in church and I hope you are too. And if we did nothing, but praise him today. He would be blessed. He would be blessed. And that's what it's all about. It's all about him. And then in turn, he thinks about you. And what he has for you. I want to read a prophecy first before I begin. The word of the Lord came to me. This word came to a man of God by the name of Kenneth Copeland known to the body of Christ as one of God's prophets in these last days. And perhaps maybe even, in my opinion, the leading prophet in the land. I know there's others, I know. Maybe God doesn't measure it that way, but that's the way I'd like to say it. But the word of the Lord came to him and said, 2016, the great year. Can you say that with me, please? 2016, the great year. And while he was waiting for the definition of that, Because in his own thoughts, in his own mind, and perhaps even verbalized this, he said, the great year of what? The Lord answered, now listen to this, and said, it's the great year for whatever you need it to be. Yeah. What do you need this year to be? It's that year. It's the great year for whatever you need it to be. And the Lord went on to explain in a little more detail. He said, for you and for your partners and your staff and for the church, now listen to this, and everybody else, that includes the body of Christ, everybody. He said, it's a great year of faith, great year. Wow, I just got a thought there. Maybe the Lord was telling us what it is we need. He said, it's a great year of what? Faith. 
for whatever you need it to be. Why? Because faith brings the answer. That's why. And God wants you and I to grow in faith. But let me read this. He said, it's a great year of faith. Great year. You're going back to the covenants of God. You're going back to the worship and praise of God and the power to heal. Do you believe that, church? Do you believe what the word of the Lord is and was and has been spoken to us through the prophet? Do you believe this word? Then here's what you and I need to do. If you haven't been doing it already, start speaking this prophecy. Sometimes I get quiet and I just listen. It's the great year, everybody. But what have you been saying about it so far? Oh, it hasn't been too great, Pastor. Maybe that's why it hasn't been the great year yet. It's the great year for whatever you need it to be. What do you need today? You know better than I know because you know what you need. But it's the great year for whatever you need it to be. It's a great year of faith. Everybody say faith. faith. Great year. So let's make this declaration today. Say Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. 2016. 2016. The great year. The great year. It's, the great year. it's the great year. For whatever I need it to be. It's a great year. Of faith. Great year. You know what I saw when we said that? Great faith. Not just any faith, but great faith. And in the Bible, so far, I've only found two occasions where Jesus responded to people and said, great is your faith. And to those two people who he said it to, at that time, they were not even under the covenant. They were outside of the covenant because they were of the Gentile world and Jesus had come for the lost sheep of Israel first to fulfill that covenant and in turn graft us in. But because, now listen to this, because this man, and I'm gonna use the man for a moment, understood authority and how authority worked, he was a soldier in the Roman army. He sent How do I say this Lord? He He sent for Jesus or he asked. In fact, you know what? Let's do this. Let's turn to it. Matthew 8. Matthew 8, we're going to read it. And I'm going to start here and get to a certain point and then connect the dots here. Starting with verse 5. 
And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. And look at this next verse because this is really key. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Now look at Jesus' response to this. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled. When's the last time Jesus marveled at your faith or my faith today? Well, actually, he has. <laughs> he saw faith in action this morning. Some of you didn't feel like dancing. Some of you didn't feel like running. But you did it by faith. Glory to God. You did it because you allowed that which lives on the inside of you to live bigger than that which is on the outside of you. You allowed the Lord who lives inside of you to manifest his glory inside. And therefore there was an explosion on the outside. Hallelujah. And how many of you know we need that? We do. It's a part of the supernatural life of God. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. Not every now and then. Not when you feel like it. Not when you feel good. Not when you don't feel so good. Oh, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Rejoicing, church, is manifested through an act of your own will. You and I could be sad all day long if we wanted to, but I choose not to. How about you? <laughs> but I will add there's no way I can be sad because the greater one lives in me and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and I've got the victory living on the inside of me and so do you now here's the key because today this is the introduction to this, what I call, I'm gonna call a great series in this great year. Because your victory in every realm of life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, socially, nutritionally, is all in. Christ Jesus. So I want you to take the heart because today the message, time's almost up. Oh, I wasn't supposed to mention time, but I did. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because we're going someplace. As a matter of fact, I'd like, maybe they already did and I didn't know it because of all the rejoicing going on. But if the video department hasn't played the video yet, have they played it yet? See, I tell you, I just get caught up up here. I get, I get caught up in the glory, folks. I mean, I, I have such a good time in his presence with you and with him. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Church is the place where we come together to worship him as one, to praise him as one, to magnify him as one, to hear from heaven 
together so that we can go out into the world and do what we're all supposed to do in Christ Jesus. This is God's local headquarters. This is where the captain of our salvation is speaking to our hearts as one. And he's preparing us for the things that we're gonna have to deal with and encounter even through the week. But he tells us, greater is he that is in you. Greater is, am I who is in you, Stan. Greater am I who is in you, Lee. Greater is, is, am I who is in you, Michael. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So Sunday it's a very special day for us, church. And we don't wanna miss out on what God is doing, not only on Sunday, but Wednesday and Friday. And I'm gonna say something. And if the Lord enlarges words of life to have more services, praise God. But the most important thing is that you be here. Because if you're not here, then we cannot grow together. And God wants us to grow together. I'd like the video department to please play the introduction to this series. For two Sundays, I've tried to get into this series. <laughs> Become new. Every advance in the call and blessing of God comes from an advance in revelation. Revolution, what is it? To affect radical change. The Apostle Paul's revolutionary revelation of Jesus Christ caused radical change in his life. And not only in his life, but our lives and countless millions over the past 2,000 years. What God has revealed in Christ has uncovered the eternal purpose of the ages. So church, I am inviting you to join us for the next whenever. <laughs> I don't know how long this is gonna take, but together we are going to learn who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, what we can do in Christ. Because I'm telling you, the day has come. The day has come. And God wants to manifest his glory in you. So here's the beginning. And we're gonna say it this way. We're gonna kick it off this way today. We're gonna make a confession together. And then what I'm gonna, and it's so simple. You know, sometimes we make things, sometimes we can. I better watch my words here. But God is simple. Yes. Understand what I mean by that. He is not complicated. He made the gospel so easy that a three-year-old can get saved or a 30-year-old as they hear the same message. Folks, this is gonna be our kickoff. It's gonna be one confession. I'm gonna ask you to take it home with you. Say 2016, 2016. The, great the great year in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Now let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time together. We thank you for what you have for us. We thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that teaches us who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, what we can do in Christ. I thank you, Father, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, that there's nothing that no one in this con congregation cannot overcome. There's not one thing that they cannot overcome. And I thank you, Father, that 
We are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So today, Lord, we testify that we are in Christ Jesus. Today, I thank you, Lord, for giving to your people as we move forward in this study. Again, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I ask you to put a hunger in their hearts to hear this word and to come to church more than they've been coming, to come on Wednesday, to come on Friday, to come on Sunday mornings, to come as often as they can. I ask you to speak to the hearts of people to begin to serve more than they have in this church. To come Monday. Well, actually, we're closed on Monday. <laughs> oh, maybe we'll open on Monday. Okay, all right, no. On Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday. To make themselves available when they are available to come and serve in whatever capacity you want to use them. Father, there is a place for every one of us in Christ. There is a calling. There is a vocation. There is, there is, how do I say this? A ministry for everyone, Father, in this place. So today, as we leave this place, I'm asking you to prepare every heart and every mind to receive the revelation of who we are in Christ, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 Hallelujah. There was a traveling man who entered a town looking for a certain address. He pulled into a driveway of a home where a little boy was playing in the front yard to ask for directions. He rolled down his window and cried out to the little boy, called out to the little, bo to the little boy, where am I? And the little boy answered, right there you are. <laughs> Many times, now listen, and then we're gonna go home. Many times in life, listen, we search for answers and direction and God shows us in his word a simple, right there you are. Understanding church, where you are has everything to do with finding out your destiny and direction in life. When you and I go to a shopping mall and we don't know our way around, what's the wisest thing to do? Ask for directions, right? But a lot of times you might go to that directory and what does that directory tell you? You are here. Why? Because, in, listen to this and then I'm gonna close. In order to go where God wants us to go in this church, you got to know where you are. Everybody say, at words of life, words of life we, are we are in heavenly places, in, heavenly places. In, Christ in Christ Jesus. And I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. With, Jesus, my Lord. with Jesus, my Lord. And everybody said, yeah. amen. All right, church, I'm going to end it right there. Glory to God. So say, whoops. <laughs> Let's just say together. Say, Jesus, Jesus you, are Lord. you are Lord. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. God, raised you from the dead. God raised you from the dead. And I thank you, and I thank you. that I am saved. I am saved. Lord, Lord, I'm going to find out who I, am, who I am in you, in you. And, my and my life is going to change in Jesus name. Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you, everyone. The altar's open and come back next week because we're going to do it from beginning to end. <laughs> who you are in Christ.